All right. Let's talk about Lil Wayne. Now look, before I became a massively successful entrepreneur by stocking up on the world supply of baby oil and selling it to Diddy for his parties at double the price, I was a huge fan of Lil Wayne. And I don't think anybody can deny the impact and the legacy that Wayne has had on the hip hop culture. You know, there was a period when Wayne was on top, the mixtape Wheezy days, and Cash Money Records was like the equivalent of Shady Aftermath, when they had their time in the sun, when they were shining, and it felt like Cash Money could do no wrong, from the Drakes to the Nicki Minaj's to everyone that they brought through. And unfortunately, there's a fallout between Wheezy and between Birdman, and Birdman really pumped the brakes on Wheezy's career. And if you want to point fingers, and if you want to blame someone for the sudden, just abrupt stop in someone's career and legacy, well, look no further than Birdman. But that's not the point of this video. Look, we already did a video on the Super Bowl. And why I felt like Kendrick Lamar was justified in being selected for the Super Bowl. He's what the culture is feeling right now. It makes sense from a business perspective, but it just makes sense from a hip hop and from a music perspective. There's going to be a hell of a lot of people that are tuned in looking forward to Kendrick's performance, to what he's going to do. Hell, you know, I'm going to react to it. You know, I'm going to get a ton of views from it because again, that's what's popping and that's what's popular. And Wayne had his time and Wayne had plenty of moments like that when he was what was popping. But what I'm seeing lately from a lot of YouTubers, from a lot of people who cover hip hop is that Wheezy is in kind of a downward spiral. And if you look at him and you look at his camp, you look at the Nicki Minaj's, some of the things that they're saying, the mutterings that they're saying about Jay-Z, about the Super Bowl selection, Captain Indirect and Drake himself has had quite a few not so subtle shots fired as well about it. It just really feels like there's this overall bitterness. There's this resentment from Camp Wheezy. But does that criticism and does that finger pointing actually apply to Lil Wayne himself? Or does it just apply to the auxiliary pieces, to other people who are affiliated with him? And is the internet just taking a story and running away with narratives? Because one thing in that I think is very, very important is the relationship of Jay-Z to Lil Wayne. And what a lot of people don't realize, well, it's this. There's people like Jay-Z. I mean, he helped me when I was really, really, really down. He don't want me to talk about it, don't want me to tell nobody, Jay don't want me to tell nobody. That man helped me with my tax. These are real friends, y'all. Shout out to my nigga Jay. I'm, sh I'm shocked that so many people are uh, running with the Jay-Z is hating on Lil Wayne narrative because Jay-Z has done nothing but show Wayne the utmost love. Jay-Z literally helped this man with his tax debt. I don't know what the actual number was, but you know, uh, the USA Today said back in 2018, it was over 14 million in taxes. Jay helped him get out of debt. Jay helped him keep his house. So I don't think that sounds like hate to me on a person. Jay wanted to sign Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. Remember that? That's right. During the time when Wayne was crashing out with Birdman, when he had his disputes, when he was in trouble, who was there to help bail him out? Who was there to help a pinnacle of hip hop? Well, none other than Jay-Z. And speaking of the baby oil and Diddy situations, yes, I'm well aware that we need to check some of Jay-Z's flight logs, but that could be a video for another day. The point is that Jay-Z invested some of his wealth and what he has earned in order to help Lil Wayne. And look, actions speak louder than words. At the end of the day, if there was this animosity that people were portraying between Lil Wayne and Jay-Z, would Jay-Z actually go and do that and spend some of his own money in order to help Wayne? And I think honestly, from the interviews that I've seen, from the interviews, from the discourse from Wayne, he still feels grateful to Jay-Z. And I don't think that he actually blames Jay-Z for the Super Bowl situation. I, I think really, he blames himself but what's unfortunate is that it just seems like there's a spiral of little Wayne at this moment in time now it's no secret that Wayne has enjoyed puffing on the magic dragon and maybe puffing one too many times and it does seem like if you look at his recent shows like his little Wayne fest well you know what I'm just gonna roll the tape of his performance <laughs> And that, boys and girls, is how you not sing in tune. And look, it's no secret that Wayne is not the best of live performers. If there is one criticism that has stuck with Wayne over the years, it's that he just doesn't take his live performances as seriously as some other artists and other MCs. There's often backing tracks that are played. There's often words that are forgotten. It feels more like a party, which is fine. The man's enjoying himself. He's having a great time. He's earned his success. But fans don't always walk away with the best sonic experience from Lil Wayne shows. Pair that with Kendrick Lamar. I mean, the man had the entire West Coast and the entire nation, on top of that, the entire world, just eating out of the palm of his hand, crip walking and singing, they not like us. And now the history books will forever have Drake's face next to the definition of a PDF file. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! 
I can't hear you! I'm just kidding, this is YouTube. It's all said for entertainment. But let's look at Lil Wayne's words from that very same concert. That moment I said to myself, I wanna be on stage for the Super Bowl one day in front of my mom. And I worked my ass off to get that fucking position and it was ripped away from me. But this motherfucking moment right here, <laughs> They can't take that, man. They can't take that from me. It was ripped away from me. Now, look, I understand his pain, right? I understand busting your ass off and feeling like you have earned something. And like I said, again, I don't want to discredit Wayne's legacy. I don't want to discredit the impact that he has had. There was definitely a solid period when Wayne was on top of the charts for hip hop, when Wayne was running shit as an MC. And did he probably deserve a Super Bowl performance back then? Absolutely. But that was then. And this is now. And I think to say something is ripped away from you implies that you were entitled to it in the first place. Listen, playing the Super Bowl with millions upon millions of people watching, the spectacle of it all, the honor of doing it, the way in which it is viewed by so many people worldwide, it really is a privilege. And it's something that not many artists ever get the opportunity to do or even asked to do. There's no guarantees with it. There's no expectations that this artist has to play the Super Bowl or this artist has to play the Super Bowl. And as much as it sucks, just because it's in New Orleans, it doesn't mean that you have to get New Orleans artists to play the Super Bowl. That's never been a precedent that was set before. I mean, sure, you could argue the concert at SoFi Stadium, which featured Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick Lamar, a lot of West Coast, but they were still buzzing at the time. You still had Eminem come out. You still had 50 Cent come out. So no, there wasn't just a run of the gauntlet of West Coast artists. And I would say that's more of a one-off than a precedent of what normally happens in a Super Bowl city. But maybe there's another explanation too. Maybe the ripped off saying and phrase that Wayne is using is because of this relationship with Jay-Z when Jay-Z bailed Wayne out. Maybe Wayne felt like he was tight with Jay-Z. Jay-Z was looking out for him. So since Jay-Z is one of the influential people behind the decision making but remember again there's a number of people involved in this it's a business at the end of the day it's not just jay z and his decision although a lot of people are just allocating it to jay z and giving him that power which he doesn't have on his own but anyways i'm digressing i feel like maybe wayne felt like because he had that sort of inner track and just that relationship with jay and the super bowl is in new orleans it's his hometown and his impact and his legacy again he is a hip-hop legend Maybe he felt like all of those factors were building up for him to play the Super Bowl. And then at the end, he was dismayed. He was let down and he was heartbroken because of it. But to just, you know, stay on brand and use a football analogy here, you know, there's being a good winner and there's being a good loser. And I think in this case, Wayne isn't being the best of losers. And I even said on my original video on this situation, you know, maybe we get a win-win for everybody. Maybe Kendrick Lamar brings Wayne out. But the more news that gets leaked, the more information that gets talked about around the situation, I don't think Wayne is coming out for the Super Bowl. And yeah, I think his track record of having poor live performances was one of the deciding factors in this situation. But yet again, it's a business. It's about who's popular and what's popping. And Kendrick Lamar is going to blast off with the Super Bowl. And everybody is going to be covering it and talking about it. But what do you guys think? Was this the right decision? If you were the one deciding who was playing the Super Bowl, who would you play? Comment down below. Also, don't forget to... uh. Tickle my bell and subscribe and notifications on. Go and give it a give it a little ring. You know you want to. But that's all for me for today. I got a show I got to go get ready for tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. Also, brand new music video. One take video dropping tomorrow as well. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. Stay classy. I'll catch you again.